is because one, they couldn't match her beauty. Two, they were old as shit. Three, they would never meet a Marcus Houston. Four, because they're in competition with young bitches. Okay. <laughs> they they wanna they want the market to be in their favor, not yours. It's yeah. not even about swag. It's it's about can I control? Swag is just the icing on the cake. It's not the it's not really the real ingredients. It's if I can if I can control you, despite if we have a good relationship or not. At the end of the day, you're not gonna you're not gonna put up a fight when it comes to who has custody of the kids. And, and I'm I'm gonna add to that because I, I agree with that because I always say you you got to think in terms of who is compromised. Women look for a man in a compromised position. See, a compromised man can be rich or he can be poor. If you're married and she gets to deal with you when you're already married, you're in a compromised position because she can always blow up your spot. So she'll take that too. You know. Now, uh, women do ch- they do choose dysfunction above what a guy looks like women do choose for looks but but if you a good looking man that's not dysfunctional she still don't want you like that when you let her find out that you're functional it's a it's kind of a problem for her she'd rather have dysfunction so it's a man that's in a compromised position regardless of what he looks like regardless of his age whatever he got going on if he's in a compromised position that she she puts him on the forefront of her list and i'm gonna put it to you this way right to be even more honest a guy, a guy at the district once said, he said, you know the reason why women don't pick men who are successful? It's because they would have to naturally submit to that. Okay, it's all about she has to submit. She has to. Even if she's defiant, she has to submit. This nigga can do without me and much better without me. I have to listen to him. I have to do what he says. I have to follow his lead. When you got a guy that's less than, he's on your coattails. Remember, like, think about it as dancing, right? Who usually leads to who usually leads to dance and partners? The man. She can do all the extravagant extravagant moves and all that stuff, but if the man does a step, the move the moves don't proceed. So thinking of it as that way, she wants you to play off a of her sheet of music. And it's not exactly what you would call a soul a soulful uh, ballad either. And 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 my thing it, it does fit along right aside white supremacy because that's why they look for men who are involved in drugs or in, in involved in their scammers or people who steal cars, people who are involved in different illegal activities. Illegal activities is just a a, a clear easy way to see a compromised man or a man who has fe- a felony background, you know, felonies in his background. That's just an easier way to see a compromised man. People talk about the th- thugs. You know, what well, these women want thugs. No, thugs is just an easier way to find a compromised man. Because who are you going to, if you're looking for a compromised man, what's the easiest place to find them? Where, 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 where uh, thugs hang out or at some college campus? Yeah. You, you can find them in both places sometimes, but it's a lot easier to find a compromised man that's hanging on the street with some thugs. Just here's what yeah. it is. So it's it's about they want that, and that not, compromise. And I'm, against, and, and I'm just going to say this before I go back into this office. I'm not against men taking care of their responsibilities, i.e. I'm the poster child of it. But at the same time, we got to stop looking at women like, oh, and hearing their stories like, this guy abused me. I used to be that way before I became a cop. Oh, there must be a lot of men beating on these women. Tell so I would come to a call one day and I had to and I and, and it's funny because the words just slipped out saying, Bitch, you lying. And I'm usually a pro, but even my partner looked at me and giggled because I'm looking at her. This guy, six foot five, three hundred pounds, built like a goddamn brick wall. He's got scratches all over his face. And she claimed that this guy who has bowling ball for fists hit her in her face. No marks, no bruises. Get the fuck out of here. You under arrest. See, it's it's like it's like thinking of your favorite fiction writer, and they want you to believe into the story. Like, I mean, these chicks will make some T.K. Rowling shit out of the out of the crack out of the crack of dawn, out of nowhere. Boom, he did this. No accountability. Don't want to say I laid down with this man and made this baby, but yet 
I feel as though this man should actually pay 10, 25 a month for one child, by the way, one. But here's the question. Nobody ever says, why is my child, if I'm paying this much for child support, why is my child going to public school? My child doesn't have a, tu a personal tutor. My child's not going to any advanced classes. Where the fuck is the money going? So men actually start to get a political a political party, a patriarch party. That's what I would call it. Trademark. I'm putting that shit on there. Don't steal my shit. Patriarch party. You're going to be susceptible to this shit every single day. You, you, you can't go out there and say, hey, I want patriarchy, but still allow this fucking type of behavior without holding these bras accountable. Because guess what? They're going to hold you accountable without question. As soon as she thinks she's pregnant, she's going, there are some states, as soon as a heartbeat in the womb, you're already in the rear. Absolutely. Unless you want another nurse black from Baltimore to occur, which I don't, we're going to have to start, you know, uh, galvanizing this uh, patriarch party and uh, having at it. Thank you, Roger. Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, now, now. I tell them, don't steal my shit. <laughs> Hey, don't, don't steal this stuff, y'all. Don't steal this stuff. And I got to say a few thank yous. I, um, I got a few cash apps. Uh, one just came in from Porter, who's asking if I take uh, show request topics. I, I will do show uh, requests that I see in the audience. from. I do do requests from time to time. So if y'all have a suggestion, yes, you can make a suggestion. I'm not guaranteeing you I'm going to do what, you, what your topic is. It depends on how much research I'm going to have to do or what I'm going to need to do to make sure it's a good, effective show. Uh, I know some people may think, oh, you guys just talk. You got to look look stuff up. You got to read stuff. You got to make sure you're on point about your stuff. You got to try and make sure you're not giving out false narratives. So uh, you got to do a little bit, a little research and background on on some of these topics. And uh, now, hundred dollars, I do say, if you uh, if you put out a hundred dollars, you definitely gonna get your show done. Just that simple. At the end of the day, other stuff, I'm gonna do it as I see fit because I do got a couple requests right now. I'm looking into. But I gotta know enough about about the subject matter, so I can talk on it from a comfortable uh, position. Cause I don't want to just be up here talking and, and don't know what I'm talking about. That 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 don't make sense at the end of the day. Uh, and I don't think that's a, being the most responsible content creator if I'm just trying to say something for, for saying it. I'm, yeah, I do like the money. I do like the financial support. I make it plain that that's why I'm here to help my people and to uh, uh, to gain financially. But I want to do it in a respectful way and not just be talking. I don't know what I'm talking about or trying to pretend like I know what I'm I know what I'm talking about, even if I don't. So thank you for the for the uh, cash app Porter. Also, thank you to 3000 GT Atlanta. Appreciate your cash app as well. And thank you for Alan Wiley on your cash app who says all for Roger, none for Google. <laughs> appreciate that, brother. I definitely appreciate that. So you ain't going to do a topic on NFTs and the metaverse? <laughs> <laughs> man i'm willing to do a topic on anything but it but i will say this like it, it has to fit the show platform because i've said before like for example there was a someone asked me to do a show on the guy who uh who paid his last payment in child support and he gave like he his last payment was 800 dollars, and uh he paid it in pennies when i started looking the story up this was all white people at the end of the day so I didn't do that story because it was about a bunch of white folks. So I wasn't really worried about that. I will do a story if white folks are included, depending upon what it is, but it has to be based around a black person because black people are my first choice. It's just that some, I don't really have that fact. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at black people first. You know what I'm saying? Our concerns are more important to me than other people's concerns. And I do believe everybody else has a good enough situation because, I mean, technically, it's complementary to their group. I think their groups are in good enough shape that they can solve their own problems. You know, so I'm not going to really put a bunch of focus on white folks at the end of the day, especially if, it, if it's not related to, to black people. You know, it's just mm -hmm. not my interest. And that's not nothing against the uh, the white people who watch me. I'm just keeping it real. That's just what it is. I'm, I'm, I I got to put more care into what's going on with black folks. Can I, can I just say something um, before I go? I wanted to Thank touch you. you. The brother said something that was really, uh, I think that we need to, to consider in terms of where do we go from here? Where do, where those brothers go from here? Um, in my opinion, the damage is 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 just too 
too too devastating. Um, they they have done a lot of damage to the black community, have done a lot of damage to our raising of our, our sons. It's not a matter of how do you teach black women can't teach a young boy how to be a man. That's obvious. It's what I'm concerned about is them screwing his head up and him not able to function correctly in society as a, as a leader and a producer, a captain of industry. And we're seeing the effects of that by these simps and, and these, these brothers who don't challenge sisters or don't challenge white supremacy. Um, and they, 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 in many cases, um, are a stand against us, take the side of, of feminism. But a couple of points I wanted to, to just bring up um, in terms of um, the device, the divestment is uh, an empty threat. Um, but we need to understand that women traditionally invade male spaces. This is women of all colors. So, you know, no matter what we do, where we go, they want to come um, and interact with us. Even uh, case in point, when we see we have these panel discussions, women are always kind of dropping in and eavesdropping. Another thing we need to understand, and this is what women all together, um, is that women are not race loyal. Um, they have proven that throughout history uh, with the you know Nazi Germany and so forth. And the last point I want to make is the strides that black women think they're making, are they're not really making. They, they are supported by white supremacy and given those positions as token positions. And then they want to talk about black girl magic and how great they're doing. If you look at modern media, if you look at the movies, for example, you'll see that black women are getting these positions like the next 007 and things of that nature. These are not positions that they've earned and, and, and gone through years of paying their dues. They're given these positions specifically by the white supremacists to, uh, to be the proxy to keep us as taskmasters in check, keep black men in check. So I just want us to consider that. Okay, well, good point. But I, I do want to say that, uh, you know, I don't have an issue with, with the fact that black women are getting opportunities. That ain't, that's not even the issue. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I know why they're being given the opportunity, but the fact that they're getting the opportunity is not the issue. The issue is who they are as a person. You know, I, I want to make that clear. Who cares what opportunity they got if they actually use it to better the black community? Will we be mad they got the opportunity? No, it's not, it's not, it's not the opportunity itself. It's who the, who the person is. The character of the person who got the opportunity is the issue. If she wasn't a white supremacist, why would I care if she's a judge? You know what I'm saying? That that doesn't bother me at all. Okay. The issue we have too many black women who are white supremacy, white supremacy, and they do a lot to hurt black families, especially when it comes to black men raising their own children. It's like they they um they clearly have an agenda to make sure that black men cannot raise their their own children, and I can't blame white people for their agenda. White people may have gave an idea. I get that. But I can't blame white people because white people ain't making them follow that agenda. We're not on the, we're not on the plantation anymore. They do have choice. They're picking what they want. And what I see, what based on what they do, I see they want a community where they want white people to be on top of black folks. That's how I, I look at it. I just look at it for exactly what it is. That's actually that's, that's correct. Yeah, and I, I see this um, as an example of what you're saying within the HR field. I mean, I've dealt with a lot of HR departments, and they're, they're primarily sisters that have been put there by the corporation. And these sisters, I saw time and time again, tend to weed out uh, strong black men, black men capable of doing the job. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, and I think that you know what I'm saying we as men need to start thinking of that, thinking of it in these terms. You know, because we say, what well, this woman is doing this and we're doing it that. Um, why is she doing it? Now, people will say she's evil. I'm not going to disagree about it being evil. White supremacy is an evil thing. <laughs> so I, I got no issue with that. Um, but we do need to rec recognize it's a form of white supremacy. That's why she wants to have a baby without a father around. You know, because look about the look at the guys who are who are fighting the court system over their children. Like like I told you all before. If you go to a court system, and, and, and if you go go to court and sit in there for a day, you're not gonna see a bunch of pookies being brought up for child support. You're gonna see a bunch of productive men who want to be in a child's lives, and you want to see you're gonna see a bunch of women who want to get more than than uh, what the men want to give them. That's what you're gonna really see if you sit in child support court all day. It ain't pookie. Pookie is rarely bothered. He can be bothered sometimes, but usually it ain't him. Hey Roger, the bad part of this. 
if a judge ever tells that woman, say, well, if you want more from the man, go back with him. Y'all get back together and start a family. Nah, nah, I can't deal with that. Nah. See, it, it, it comes to the point, and I always say this, a lot of women are selfish. And to a degree, you only want to spite the man by taking his money, putting him through the ringer and all that stuff, where who, who all knows you? I mean, I know men know this, but when it comes down to it, if you're in a relationship with a female, what, what does that female get? All kind of pr provision, protection, everything, man. She gets all kind of money. You're buying all kind of gifts. A lot of these women, they get nothing for Christmas. They bought all these toys for the kids. You know, uh, grandma gave them a pair of socks, and that's it. But the, the, the women who are in a relationship, taking care of you, taking care of the kids, most most men didn't probably get nothing for Christmas, but at the same time, they made sure the kids, the wife, everybody had a good Christmas. Even did some for grandma and everybody, all these other people in their family. And a lot of these women get bitter and get mad because of that. You know, they don't have that special some way, but then you, you're wedging a knife in between that relationship with you and that man and the kids. So how do you expect for this man to give you something? It's funny to hear that stuff. And I, I just want to say that, too, real quick about what uh, Charles was talking about. You know, the funny thing is I was dealing with a chick, and I told her. I said, you don't put your hand on me, I don't put my hand on you. When it comes down to it, a lot of women don't understand that you putting your hand on me result me putting my hand on you. So keep your hands to yourself, and everybody will be fine in this world. You know, they think that putting... Hidden men is an option that they have. And they get sadly mistaken because, like I say, you run into me, I'm going to hit you back. You know, I, I take that air. I go to jail because I'm going to let you know you ain't going to hit no other man after you hit me because that's self-explanatory. You don't want me hitting on you, beating on you. So why not do the same for me? You know, every woman I've dealt with, I told them the same thing, even all the way down to my wife. When we first got together, and we had our talks, I let her know, you know, I'm not a woman beater. I don't put my hand on women. So I don't expect you to put your hand on me. If you put your hands on me, you know, there's consequences behind that. And a lot of women fail to realize that because men are not letting them know I'm not your punching bag, you know, and to the degree, like I say, a lot of them are just right now to the point where they're just, they're selfish and they always stand with this selfish mindset, you know, well, you know what? That's that's part of white supremacy too. They they do everything they can to make the man docile, which is why they teach boys not to hit girls instead of just teaching people not to hit people. You know, because because y'all y'all well those who've been around long enough knows me. If you hit me, I'm my job is to win the fight. I don't care who hit me. Point <laughs> blank. Period. We in the fight because I got hit. Because I know I don't go around hitting people. So we're obviously in a fight if I got hit, and it's my job to beat you. That's it. And I'm going to do the best I can to win that fight. I don't care who, who you are. It's just that simple to me at the end of the day. My mom now, told got, me that. <laughs> what'd you say? I said, no, nah, my mom told me that. My mom and my grandma, she said, don't let no woman put their hand on you. I'm like, those ladies said, if a woman hit you, my, my grandma, she was a little nicer with it. She said, push them or stuff like that. My mama said, clean they clock. She said, you hit them hard as you can. And I looked at her strange. I was like, I'm like, dang, she a woman telling me. And I'm like, why? And, you know, I was confused. And so she told me, she said, you know why I told you that? And I said, why? She said, because if you hit her hard enough, she going to remember that when, when she go to hit another man, that little dome that she, you hit in the back of the head, she going to start rubbing that spot before she grabbed that man and got a collar. Because she going to remember that. I felt something back there before. What was that? It hurt. And I, I laughed at it, you know, because like I said, I was a child. But the point of it was, that was a valuable lesson to me, you know. And I was like, dang, like I didn't, like I don't want to be to a point where I hit a woman, you know. I ain't never really got into no fight with no female nothing like that. I don't, I don't yoke my two of them out before, you know. They was getting too reckless, and I kept telling them gone. You know, they kept swinging their hands. I guess they was on some karate stuff because they couldn't, they didn't ball up their fists. You know, they was windmilling and stuff, so. I caught him in a yoke and, you know, pushed him back. Other than that, man, I never hit a woman, you know, because if you she know, hit me, I sure was going to hit her back. Just 
Like my grandma always say, just as Peace Street go through Buckhead. And for well, everybody in Atlanta, that's a street that runs all the way from Atlanta, all the way up. <laughs> like Madison. Yeah. You know about that's Madison correct. down yep. in Chicago. <laughs> That's that's exactly how I was uh, taught by my mother not to hit women. And I'm going to tell you something. It's just an anecdote. I um, went. I can't tell you how many times I've been uh, physically assaulted by uh, black women for no apparent reason. I'm a kind of a meek, conservative guy. It was one date I was going on with this sister. I met her. We decided to go on a date. This was in New York, and we we, we were on the subway train and trying to decide what restaurant we would go to. And I was like, "Well, I, I want to get Italian." She's like, "No, I don't want Italian," and she really couldn't like make up her mind so i said well listen it, let's just go to the italian restaurant and if you wanted something else we'll, we'll, we'll go from there Do you know she drew her fist back and punched me in the chest out of nowhere and i was in total shock but you know hey i, I let that go we eventually went to the movie theater and we're sitting there and the guy in back of her seat kept kicking her seat she went ballistic because I wouldn't protect her or, or or get involved in the situation. And I was like, you just punched me in the chest. Now you want me to protect you. I'm like, oh my God, you know? So um, it, we're, we're presented with this conflicting information. You know, it's very hard for us to know, like, what do we do? Q, Q, after, Q, after that first punch in the chest, I'm not taking no bitch to the movies. I, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't. I don't even know why you decided to. You're not gonna go see Spider Man No Way Home. You're just going home. <laughs> you're just going home. There is no Spider Man No Way Home. You're just going home, bro. Like but that's crazy as hell. But brother, you know, what we you know the programming is deep. Let me explain to you. I've been programmed to like you got to have a black woman. You got to have a start start a black family. The black woman is the queen and all this. And when something like that happens, you just like well, you know what? Um, I I got to work with this situation because you know i gotta be loyal to black women and that has been like like just grilled into us for so long well i i think that's why we need to to uh watch how we how we say these certain things that's why i'm i'm saying wholeheartedly if somebody hits me it's my job to win the fight i'm not making an issue amongst gender be that that issue amongst gender to me is a white supremacist thing it's about keeping black men docile and if they can keep you docile, even when it comes to your women, it'll keep you docile toward them. That's the that's the effect that they want. And I know uh, Charles said earlier that he think black men are, are scared of white men. I don't actually think black men are scared of white men. I do believe we are scared of black women, though. I believe it's, we've been trained to be that way since we were children. And we are definitely, as a collective group, afraid of black women, which is one of the reasons that we would allow them to beat on us, because it's been taught to us that this should be allowed. If a man hits me, I'm supposed to fight. Period. You know what I'm saying? If I don't fight, everybody looking at me crazy. Like, man, you just gonna let him do that to you? No, I'm not gonna just let. I'm not saying I'm so tough I can't never lose a fight, but I'm not gonna give it to you. You know what I'm saying? So if you hear me, I'm fighting. It just is what it is. We're not supposed to be. Well, I mean, I'm in, I'm in my 40, so you know we shouldn't be fighting anyway at this particular point. But if we can't fix it with words. I'm not gonna just let you beat me, and just because you're a woman, don't mean you gonna get you get the beat on me. That's not the way I see myself. I don't believe God put me here to be abused by a woman, so I cannot see myself allowing anybody to whoop on me. If you beat me, you beat me, but I'm not giving it to you. Go ahead, King Alawo. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How you been, bro? Doing well, doing well. Man, you know, once again, man. Um, once again, uh, you hit the nail squarely on the head, man. You and Officer Faulkner, when you spoke about um, women being more attracted to a dysfunctional man or just more attracted to dysfunction, period. Like, um, and it really hit home when you said, you could be an attractive man by most women's standards. like you could be a good looking guy if your good looks don't come with dysfunction she's not going to want you and i was um i was in you know for those of y'all who don't know i am a truck driver and um i was inside of the truck stop and i was listening to you and when you said that i said god damn it he done did it again <laughs> he done did it again so I, I i'm just chiming in man because i i live that 
uh, I lived that firsthand, like not not even that long ago. It, it was just last year. Of course, it's about to be 2022. So early 2020, I was introduced to a chick. You know what I'm saying? Um, she's in the same Elay that um, that I'm in. Of course, the Elay is like a church. You know, I'm a practitioner of Ifa, which is where the name Olowo comes from. It means rich, by the way. Wing, wing. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <name>. so <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah, it means rich. Now, nah, so um, so we in the same Elay or, or whatnot. And my, my homeboy introduced me to it, brought this chick straight to my house, right through the front door. And uh, and he hooked us up. He thought we'd be cool for each other. He he knows what I like. You know, I love chocolate women, short, thick, and chocolate. That's been my lane for many, many years. And um, long story short, again, you know, everything started off great, as it always does. But once she began to realize the kind of person that I am, how I conduct myself, how I move, how disciplined I am, what I actually have to bring to the table. I actually have something to offer you. I don't need anything from you, et cetera, et cetera. That was too much for her. You know, like she started sabotaging our shit, you know, started making up excuses not to come see me, started making up excuses not to come fuck with me. Uh, you know, tried to friend zone me after she gave me the pussy. I'm like, that's backwards. You can't friend zone me after you gave me the pussy. <laughs> yeah, like, that shit is dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so just all this, I mean, it was the most bizarre dating experience I probably ever had. And it took me a few months to figure out why the hell did that shit happen? Because number one, I didn't ask for it. And number two is like, I mean, why wouldn't a decent woman want to deal with a decent man? But long story short, to make your point, some months later, me and my homeboy, we had linked back up and we laughed with a joke and talking shit about the girl because she told me that on her Instagram, she bitching and complaining that her ex-boyfriend been stealing money from her, right? This was the dude that she was obviously dealing with before she met me. So we put two and two together. I'm like, oh, 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 okay. How can a nigga steal money from you from another state unless you're giving him money? Like you love, like you love this piece of shit nigga so much. You giving him money from Atlanta all the way to Houston. And then want to get mad when this nigga find, figures out a way to siphon money out of your account without your permission. It, 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 it's just the most b bizarre shit. And, you know, this is when this is when I, I realized, you know what, I've already met my one, you know, that I got engaged not long after that. And the rest is history. But it's like. Even throughout all of that, you got a woman that done been to my house, had access to my house. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, we, we done wine and dine. I done, I done finessed, smashed a few times. I'm really enjoying her company. I really enjoying who, who, who she is as, as a person. Still found a way to fuck it up. Found a way to fuck it up. And it's just like, now we know what it is. And now we know that we all, all men, we all share the same experiences. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, so I'll step down for a second and let y'all chime in because I feel like I've been talking for too long. But yeah. I'm a, I'm <laughs> you know why? You know why you was, she, she kind of did what she did? Because she wasn't comfortable. She wasn't comfortable with herself, you know? She was trying to be a good girl, trying to, you know, establish a good relationship and all that stuff. But in the end, that's what she really didn't want. She didn't want a good right. man. That's why she pursued nah. the other guy. And, and see, a lot of women, they have this notion of, I want to get my life together. I want to live right. But they, they still have that, 
you know, I want to be like everybody else type of mindset, you know, that, that crowd, you know, that the herd mindset. Everybody else is having a hot girl summer and living their best life. Why can I? And the thing of it is, you know, to a degree, I was listening, I was talking to the guy yesterday, and we was talking about the women that actually are good or somewhat. She said a lot of the good women are in hiding. And the guy was like, how so? Why, why are you in hiding? You know, to the degree, it's like they, they feel as if they, they're going to get a bad bunch, but it's all about who you hang around. It's all about who you deal with. You know, you right. had a guy that was basically potentially giving her a, a, a key, but she still wanted to deal in the in, in the courtyard with the peasants. She didn't want to go to royalty. And so you you died I mean, an awesome bullet, man. I commend you. I mean, I'm a, a bro. I, I, I know I did, bro. And um, let's see, we both live in Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. Um, I grew up in Lithonia. You know what I'm saying? So we know I'm, I'm, I'm we know how the women are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I live in Midtown currently, but yeah, I, I grew up right there in South DeKalb County, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a DC kid, definitely. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, we know how the women are there, man. Um, we know how they used to be back in the day. We know how they ultimately became throughout the years because we remember when Atlanta wasn't what it currently is today, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love my city, but man, 15, 20 years ago, Atlanta was a totally different place. And your selection of women there is, um, I mean, like you'll, you'll, be hard, you'll, you'll be hard pressed to find a decent woman now, a decent woman. And if she is decent, pray, pray that she already doesn't have one or two kids. And then the, and the bad part about it was in Decatur on the east side, man, you you get more good women than on the west side and the south side. You know, north side it was a toss up. You know, they kind of got themselves stuck in their ways, but right. Know, and now just all across the city, man, it's just like trash everywhere. You can you can't you can't move in the city without you know running running over a speed bump. You know, hitting the <laughs> hitting the landmine every once in a while, man. I would never get married again because like what, what do you have to choose from and then you got these older women they, they want stability and comfort you know at an older age in life you know you waited till you turn in your late 40s going into 50s that saying you need to be with somebody you need stability you change it now but it's too late like nobody, nobody want, nobody want to go that deep and get leftovers. You know, nobody want leftovers from like two, three months ago. You know, a week or two, okay, I can deal with that. But two, three months leftovers? No, oh, no, that's a raw deal. Right, well, well, I'm, I'm gonna say to to Big Mac who uh, commented in the chat because um, when you talking about uh, he disagrees, I believe he was disagreeing with the fact that I said I don't think most black men are scared of white men. I really don't believe they are. Black men have an issue with with consequences as far as going to prison and things like that. You know, we know we can't necessarily fight cases. Um, we don't have the money to even put cases up, you know, to fight against cases if we do certain things at certain time. Just like I was saying the other day that, you know, when you, when you look at the white man who possibly killed it, that young black woman, uh, Lauren, what's her name, Lauren Field Smith or Smith Fields. You know, I could easily believe the white man killed her because he don't expect to deal with the the legal system the way black men do. Black men, you know, we don't do that stuff because we, we don't operate different because we scared of white men. We know there's consequences at the end of the day. Plus, we're just better people from a moral standpoint. Usually, uh, black men are, are the most moral men out here. Okay, so I don't think it has anything to do with, do with fear, but I think you got to recognize sometimes you got to be calculating with uh with with people. Cause I had a, a white man who called me a nigga once on a phone call. Now, I was at work. I didn't. I wasn't gonna uh, respond a certain way while I'm at work on a phone that's owned by the job. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know stuff can be recorded, and even if it ain't gonna be recorded, I'm not gonna take them type of chances. Now I did address the man when I I ended up uh, getting with the man when me and him was face to face. 
I said, forget all that stuff about the phone call. You call me a nigga again, I'm going to beat the brakes off you. I'm letting you know that right now. <laughs> Plain and simple, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I threatened them face to face. I didn't make the threat on the phone call. I didn't do it in front of people. I didn't do it where people could hear me or anything like that. I did it with just my word versus his word. And I told him straight up. He said, if he call me a nigga again, I'm literally going to beat the brakes off him. Now, maybe you can get somebody to take me to jail. Cause I'm gonna have a story, and you're gonna have to make your story up, whatever the case is, and we just gonna see how that flows. But at the end of the day, you already old. I don't even know if you're gonna survive this beating. You see what I'm saying? Now, some people can say, "Well, he was talking slick to you on that phone call. You scared?" No, nah, I just I just wanted to handle it a different way in a better time for me. <laughs> That's all that really was, you know. And uh, I don't like beating up old people, cause cause I I do believe in those babies and, and children and old people should be the most protected people. But I can make an exception for a man calling me a nigga. You know what I'm saying? A white man calling me that, I can make an exception. So I would have beat him down as an exception. It's just been what it's going to be at the end of the day. You know? And then he still had to prove that I actually did it. And I was going to try to make sure I beat him enough where he couldn't remember who actually did it. And I let him know that. <laughs> he he started acting right, right though. He, he, he started he started treating me real nice <laughs> after, that, after that conversation. Though we, I, I never had no more problems out of that guy ever, you know. So he he caught the message, but I, but I do think um, the reason you have a lot of females who are acting the way that people are talking about on the panel, this is all because this is still stems from white supremacy. Women are raising these kids to act adversarial toward black men. They're raising w girls to be adversarial toward black men. So then you have women who become adults who are comfortable being adversarial toward black men and it just shows up now when it, for the boys you know you talk about um men uh doing stuff in societies whether it's shooting people uh robbing people selling drugs and all that type of stuff most of those guys come gonna come from a single mother neighborhood they have not been taught that black people are valuable that's why they steal from black other black people yeah y'all ever Think about the fact that, you know, when people rob people, they they go, they go rob, like poor people who rob poor people, which never made sense to me at all. Like you want to rob people that's in the hood. Why don't you go to a nice neighborhood and rob somebody with some money? You know what I'm saying? Well, you can rob one or two people and be good rather than trying to rob 60 people because you're trying to rob everybody in the hood. And this person got $20, this person got $5 on them, this person ain't got no money on them, and you steady robbing people. But see, the thing is, They've been taught by women to not value black people, period, especially not a black man. So they will take from another black man. But all these issues come with the fact that black women are white supremacists and they don't want black fathers to raise their children. You know, I've said plenty of times that um, to be a part of a group about is about who the men are. If, if, if the men are gone, just just like in in war you kill the men small children and women can be left alive because they will be assimilated and i know a lot of people say well you know women 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 are the first teachers of culture i'm not saying you're wrong but if men ain't around that culture don't exist it's just that simple as soon as you eliminate the men of a culture that culture ceases to exist black women don't want black men to have a culture they don't want us to be a society that's why they're working so hard to fight us tooth and nail, especially when it comes to children. That's why child support is a thing mm -hmm. to them. They'd rather have child support than you visit. They'll claim they want you to visit, but if they can get child support without you visiting, they'll take it every single time. Go, go ahead, King, if you're about to say something. Well, yeah, man, you know, I wanted to piggyback on what she was talking about just a few minutes ago. Um, Like, he said something profound when he said, instead of dealing with a king, no pun intended, like you would rather deal with and play around with a court jester, a peasant. And it's like, literally, I'm not making this up again. Like that, that's why this whole situation is so bizarre when you hear this, because it's like all of, like all of, all of this shit actually happened <laughs> because it's like, the dude that she was dealing with, he was living with her. He didn't work. I don't think he ever worked hard and 
the entire time they were together. Um, he couldn't he couldn't go to the store and buy a bottle of liquor and some cigarettes unless she gave him the money. I mean, like just the most bizarre shit you've ever heard or seen in your life. And then, then on top of that, you giving this nigga again, again, like this nigga that ain't doing nothing, ain't 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 producing nothing. Um, rumor has it might like might even be a little suspect. I mean, like you giving this nigga threesomes, you you bringing other bitches in, in in y'all bed to please him. I'm like this. I'm like this doesn't make an ounce of sense. Like well, to have be- this much, like t- to have this much reverence and respect for a nobody, all because well, you can control them. That's the only benefit that you get is you can control this nigga. Because my self-esteem is so low, I can only deal with niggas that I can control. Well, the, the, it's about the perspective she's looking from. The respect is not for him. The respect is for white men that are white supremacists. That's what the respect is for. They the one told her to go get a man that you're better than. They the one said that black women are better than black men. And the woman wants to live in a world where she can say that that's true. And mm. if she's going to have a baby by a man, who does she rather have a baby by? The nigga that she got to give money to the send to the store or the nigga who a truck driver who can do what he want to do? She'd rather right. have the dude who, who's dependent upon her so she'll have that con- sense of control and she can keep him in check for zaddy, as they say. That, right. You know what I'm saying? We don't think about it from their practicing white supremacy perspective. And if she's gonna have children, who's you know what I'm saying, whose kids can she better rear and control? She's gonna have a much easier time running his kids than your kids. I'm not saying there ain't enough in place in society where she can get a con- total control of your kids too, but it's gonna be more work than get control total control over his kids. Right. So when when you look you at know, it from a oh, perspective, it all makes sense. Yeah, you know, Roger, I thought about that too. I'm um, just looking back at how my brother and I were raised in comparison to. Um, how white women raise their children. And with my mother, it was about control um, and, and, and making sure that she interjected in every, every stage in our development. And there, there's a point where young, young men come into their own and they want a, a, a certain amount of agency. And she didn't want that for us. And I noticed that when white women are, are raising uh, young white boys, that they, they treat them with a certain amount of reverence or respect and they give them a, a certain amount of latitude or freedom so that they can grow and come into their own. So I, I've noticed that black women seem to be on the control tip. So I, it's very interesting you said that. Yeah, which is why they don't want children parented by black men. Because if if black if black children develop reverence for black men, what is they going to do to their position in society? That's what they're concerned with, and that's not going to be pleasing to the master. You see what I'm saying? Masters don't the master don't want you raising kids. That are gonna respect and honor black men. That's not their perspective. They they don't have a problem allowing a child to be in the home that master gave them. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to uh to uh, section eight or something like that, or even if they gave her a job, but she makes a bunch of money and she can provide a home. She still don't want her children challenging a white man down the road, which is why she's gonna do everything she can to prevent a black man from uh, being a father to his kids. Because if you raise your children, you're going to challenge that white man at some point. That's what she's worried about. Well, I'm not that white man, but and I hate it's the white man, but it's really about the white supremacist at the end of the day. They don't want black children growing up to be thinking adults is going to challenge white supremacy. She wants you to be at the bottom of society because she thinks that's going to please white men. Because black women don't really true. separate the white supremacy from white men part. I do that because I know better, but they don't really do that. Go ahead. Can I you was just, oh yeah, man. You know, I agree with you a hundred percent, and um, it just goes to show you how deep the programming is because you have women who were quote unquote uh, intellectually and spiritually conscious who still participate 
in the same behavior. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you can't tell certain women that they're not a goddess and they're not a queen and they this and that. And uh, I mean, just, you know, just all this bloviating about how great they are 24 seven. But it's like, even the ones who call themselves conscious, the ones who won't even listen to a white song, won't even listen to music if it's done by, if it's made by a white person. I mean, like, yeah, like you have some people who go to that extreme, but yet you participate in the same dysfunction and the root of it is white supremacy yeah you, you're exactly right like it's at the root of all of it so i mean it just goes to show you just how deep the programming is like it don't matter how high a woman thinks she's elevated mentally or spiritually like she she still falls back into the same shit that every other woman fell for but the question i have is this why if that is the case then why are they they going against um, the social norms in terms of being um, uh, being able to be selected by males? Um, what I mean by that is uh, the obesity rate, the weeds, um, the bad attitude. These are not conducive to uh, pair bonding, to finding mates, and they 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 gone out of their way to make themselves what seems to be undesirable to both black men and black, um, uh, white men and, and black men. So I don't understand what their their modus operandi is. What what are they trying to do? Well, the thing is, a lot of them have given up. If you've given up on getting a white man, you'll go ahead and get fat. Damn. What's, 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 the, what's the point in, in me being in shape if white men won't take me? Damn. See, the, the, the thing is, we as black men, we we believe they're supposed to consider us too. They don't. <laughs> you, you, you don't really matter like that to them. You know what I'm saying? That's why them being fat is only about if a white man is going to accept him. Um, just look wherever you where, wherever you are, because I know it's like this in other places. And when I've traveled, I've seen this. But I see, I have the luxury of looking at this all the time. If all I got to do is go to downtown Chicago, because everybody goes downtown. If you see a, a a woman, you know, 24, 25, 26, you know what I'm saying, up until her 30s, and she's in shape. Usually she wants a white man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's very obvious. She's already she's already with a white man. If you yeah. see very attractive women downtown, usually they're not interested in black men. You know what I'm saying? You see it all the time. So I don't think that black women have an issue of staying in shape. It's about who they're trying to stay in shape for. Now, why is downtown important? Because that's where everybody comes in the Chicago area. Everybody goes downtown. So she'll, she'll have a chance of, of uh, talking to white people uh, downtown. See, white, black, black, I mean, black, I mean, in Chicago is very segregated when you start looking at neighborhoods, like we have black neighborhoods, uh, white neighborhoods, even uh, breakdowns of neighborhoods where you'll have uh, Greek, you'll have uh, Italians, you got separations of people, but downtown is where the whole mix is. Everybody comes into downtown. You start going after very attractive black women downtown, most of those women are with a white guy or trying to make sure they're single so a white guy can can have you. And if you just start talking to regular everyday uh, black women, especially ones that, that um, are on the chunky side, whatever the case is, they'll take a black man because they've given up on getting a white man. They still want one, but they, they're not working to get one because they don't believe they're going to actually get one. So, you know, when you look at what they're doing, yeah, that, it, it's not about us at the end of the day. It's, it's definitely not about us. Not from a collective standpoint. Sure, you might be able to find one black woman who will stay in shape for her black man, but you're not going to find that regularly. That's why you don't really see black women at gyms. And the price for that is so high. Most niggas is like, damn, I got to be this nigga just for you to, just for, just for, for me to enjoy you going to the gym three times a week. You know, ain't no. I nigga. gotta be this. I gotta be this extraordinary ass nigga just for you to go to the gym and put down the bowl of ice cream. Well, I, I don't think you can be that extraordinary as as a black man. That's that's really not. I mean, it's nice to think because we want to feel like we can conquer any particular thing. So if I say to myself, if I just achieve this particular thing or get this particular merit, then 
you know, she gonna act right. That ain't really the case. I mean, um, right. and, and I do have the luxury because keep in mind, I grew up watching Michael Jordan play. Michael Jordan wife wanted a divorce. It, it, you know, whatever you want to describe a man is supposed to be, ain't he that? The man, he I mean, feet, he's six six. <laughs> he, I mean, Michael Jordan's wife tried to downplay his accomplishments and try and try to look at him like he won shit from day one. What, what, well, that's what I'm saying. It is people. You people will say it's about the man you are, or what you achieve. Michael Jordan is not just a good at what he does. Michael Jordan is arguably. And all and a uh, and a uh, very high percentage of that argument, he the best that ever did what he did. He is. So you know what I'm saying. Now, in my now, opinion, he is. And keep in mind when he got divorced, this is not today. When you got a LeBron and kids ain't never seen Michael Jordan play, is arguing that LeBron is better or anything like that. This dude wife divorced him while he was clearly the best who ever did what he did. It was basically clear. Every blue moon, you'll, you'll hear somebody mention Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and that was it. Now, was he rich? Yes. The man was making like $30 million a year off the court. The Bulls didn't really pay him, but he was making like $30 million a year off the court. So, you know, a person who's making right. $30 million a year, like how much money do you need to make to prove you are who you're supposed to be? He got the height thing. He's 6'6". Six, six. <coughs> okay? He got the status because he's an NBA player. He was he, he's a uh, w extremely well known athlete. The, the only person who you may have known who may have been more known than Michael Jordan was possibly Muhammad Ali. So I get that black men want to say that I can do something myself personally and then women will look at me a different way. Uh, Juanita Jordan proved that ain't true at all. And, and, and he was at the height of his career. And in terms of Mike, right? I mean, Coach Bobby Knight called this nigga the GOAT before he even stepped on the NBA court. I'm talking about he called him the GOAT from day one. You know what I'm saying? And just me thinking about the fact that, like, when he tells the story about how he met his wife, that whole relationship was based on dysfunctional gaslighting bullshit from the jump. Like, he 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 let this woman downplay him as if I don't care that you play basketball. And I don't mean nothing to me. Blah blah blah. I'm like fuck that. I'm gonna have to marry somebody that uh, that shit means everything to me. She need to worship me. She need to grovel at my feet. I mean fuck that. Like you don't become that kind of nigga to be subjugated and get treated like everybody else. You are greater than everyone else. Well, well, I mean, my like, thing is, my thing why is, would is you it, forget that? Well, see, my thing is, like, whatever type of man you are, she's going to see you the way she wants to see you. And that's something that's hard for me to accept. And, and shout out to Casual Observer, who just put in the chat, uh, <laughs> or Michelle Obama. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> this dude became the quote unquote first <laughs> black president of the United States. Like, what, what do you need to do as a man? When, when you see examples of men achieving great things and they still get the same attitude when it comes to black women, okay? They get the same type of attitude. Now, since this show was really supposed to be about black fathers issue with, with uh, white supremacy, I mean, I believe it was Michelle Obama who said that she was a baby mama, talking about the, the her her why she's married to the president of the United States. And, and she's you know, want to fit in because she, you know, that's what it, what it's about. She want to fit in. Yeah, she oh, said I'm that. Baby mama. Yep, she said that. You know, so my thing is, whatever you do as a man, whatever kind of father you are, at the end of the day, she is who she is, and that's something I think is hard for black men to really wrap their minds around. I think the way I, the reason I see stuff the way I see, because I just accept people for who they are at the end of the day. And I literally have told people the safest bet is you can that you can make is for a person to be themselves. That's the safest bet Correct. you can make. If you a clown every time I see you and I make a bet that you're gonna be a clown tomorrow, I, I feel pretty confident in that bet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If if you always dress sharp, you're a dapper looking gentleman, every time I see you, I'm gonna make a bet that you'll be night, uh, you'll be freshly dressed tomorrow. Why? Because I'm expecting you to be yourself. 
And, and I think when, when we look at women, we do a lot of mental gymnastics because we've been taught not to see them as who they actually are at the end of the day. And, and the problem that I see too a lot is that um, we have been so conditioned by society that we try to make it work. You know, I can't tell you how many friends I have who are having problems in the relationship and they, they talk about how they're willing to do this, willing to do that. And the women don't even want to like come to therapy or don't even want to meet them halfway. I think we, we come to an impasse. We come to a situation where we, we can't work with them because they, they, they're refusing. Well, if you don't respect someone, there's no, there's no way that they're going to come to the table and, and, and talk. Yeah, and, and that's true, which is, which is um, I mean, that's part of the reason I'm single now. Because if I <laughs> and people would say, well, you know what, you need to date somebody else. Well, who you want me to date? You want me to date out? Because that's all that's all you're really telling me to do. You know, you it's about the women you talk to. Who the black ones? Because because that's who I'm talking to. So I mean, you know, I mean who you telling, bro? Yeah, I mean, and, I mean and, and 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 I'm just want to say this because they'll say, well, well, where are you meeting them? Well, well, you, well, well, are you trying to suggest that the church is the bad place? Are you trying to suggest the grocery store is a bad place? Are you trying to suggest that at a job is a bad place? Are you suggesting that school is a bad place? Because, you know what I'm saying, when you start talking about where I meet them, it ain't like I'm going to the club to meet no broads. You know what I'm saying? You go to the club to smash. That's it. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if I can't meet a good regular, uh, uh, if I can't just meet a regular woman who's a good person at the end of the day, how is, how on earth is that supposed to be my fault? I live in the city with millions of yeah. people, and this ain't got nothing to do with me even leaving the city limits. This it's millions of people right here in the city, and I can't just come across one. And, and I'll tell you the most embarrassing part of all of this is, you know, I went out to the club the other day with, with a friend of mine. He's Korean, and he pointed out in the club the 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 like the sisters who were fat and obese, and he was at, and some of them were were with black men. And he asked me, "Why are those guys with those women? Obviously, those guys look good." And these women are obese there. And he, he was using words like roly poly and things like this. Other races of men see this. And the, the, these women are embarrassing us, uh, especially going back to what I was saying before about coming out in public with a bonnet on your head and your pajamas, which indicates bad hygiene. It's like, you know. Oh, God. Preach. Yeah, it's, it, re it represents us as men. And it's really, it's, it's just. Um, it's not only a failure to um, themselves because they don't care how they, the world looks at them, but the world looks at us as though, why can't you get your women in check? Well, you know what? And, and, and on that regard, that's why I keep um, pushing the fact that you, you, you know, if I'm not your leader, you don't assign that to me. And I think black men need to, to say that more and more. Now, our women are the women that are married to us and the ones that, you know what I'm saying, that we're with. If, if you're not married to us, and it don't have to be a state sanctioned marriage, but if you're not married to us, you know what I'm saying? In that regard, no, we, we can't take responsibility for a bunch of single women. You know what I'm saying? Who is their leader? If you ask me, is white supremacy clearly at the end of the day. So those those women follow white supremacy and they look bad. Maybe they should stop following white supremacy, but don't try to put that on me as a regular black man walking, <laughs> walking down the street, living my life. It is my fault that they, they are who they are. I don't leave those women. I mean, hey, hey, real quick bit, bro. Um, I want to piggyback off of what the good brother just said, man. Um, other races of people are noticing it, first of all. I mean, like, yeah, it's difficult not to notice. I mean, like, how the hell can, <laughs> I mean, like, how can you not notice it? I mean, like, it's, 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 it's the biggest joke um, <laughs> that the world has ever seen. Um, not to mention that the Korean brother asked you, like, well, why do y'all, well, why do black men as a group deal with those type of women? I mean, like, they embarrassing y'all. I mean, like, I mean, case in point. Me and one of my best friends, we kind of had a falling out because I called bullshit on why he chose to procreate with the woman he procreated with. I, I just simply said, bruh, all of the years we, we've been talking, all of the years that we've been chopping up game, 
bouncing ideas off each other's brain, back and forth, back and forth, just giving each other game and knowledge for the come to women and life in general. You finna attach yourself permanently to a strat? After all that? That's never a great decision, but a lot, a lot. I of mean, us- you know what I'm saying? So it's just, I'm sorry, Roger. I, I would just, just pick, piggybacking off what he said. It's like, it's something I don't know because I'm not that dude, but it's something wrong with us as black men. Like maybe it's just the collective level of low self esteem. Well, you, you're starting to hit the nail on the head. The thing is, we were taught to be there no matter what. Black men were taught to be there for black women no matter what. And because we, oh, there you go. That, we, we, we make poor decisions at the end of the day. So, th- which is one of the reasons I, I push that black men going to have to learn to be the Rufus Nice guy. We, we we got to be able to move in society. We need to have a good image about ourselves. But just because you want that does not mean you have to drag people kicking and screaming to the promised land, you know, which is something I was taught that you do not do. You do not drag people kicking and screaming to the promised land. If women no. don't want to be saved, my thing is, OK, and I just keep on going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. I'll save people who want to be saved, but I'm not saving anybody who doesn't want to be. And I want I want to read this by Elwood Johnson too, because this this is 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 a major part of this effect. He says some of the abuse was to make sure black boys didn't have voice in their home. They they used to force quiet. They used to they used force to quiet a black boy's thoughts and inhibitions. Now, Elwood, this is a very good point, and I just want to say that see when when these boys become men. A lot of times they don't take authority over their households either, which is why I say sometimes <laughs> that uh, the women almost got the boys where they, where they want them to be. You know, um, I saw a TikTok a day or two ago, um, or about two days ago, I guess. And it was a little boy on a TikTok and he had on a pink do rag. And, you know, he, he messing he, he with his father. You know, they cracking jokes or whatever the case is. But the dude had on the pink do-rag. And I'm sitting there thinking like, bro, why y'all so comfortable in pink? Because when I was a kid, pink was for girls, blue was for boys. Now, I get that some people, you know, uh, say, you know, you wear whatever you want. My thing is I don't want to be associated as a woman in any kind of shape, way, or form. That's just not my desire. As a man, I do not want to be associated as a woman in any kind of shape, way, or form. Uh, if I could go back through history, because I, I think when I was in high school, we had an opposite sex day for like uh, we was doing like a week of different stuff. Um, now, if I could go back th- in, in time, I would change that and be like, y'all, let's not even do this day. We're going we gonna to pick something else. We're going to pick something else because it, it was a day for girls to dress like boys and boys to dress like girls. We shouldn't even done that, you know. Now, I get it. We was kids and we didn't figure all this stuff out at the end of the day. But but the thing is, even the adults at that particular time should have stepped in and said something like, no, we're not good with this. or we not. That's not cool or something like that. But we don't do that type of stuff because we've been so indoctrinated on on such a large level. And that's why I say we got to look at how we're 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 being treated collectively, because, you know, as individuals, you might say, well, no. But it's got to spread to just more than you as an individual. That's why I, I kept, well, I'm going to continue to push. Anything that you get from my channel, make sure you say it in, in your regular everyday life. Not at your job. I understand job situations are different. But you're going to have to spread the words amongst your own family, amongst your own friends, or people you associate with. There's some stuff just ain't cool at the end of the day. And, and I think that, that uh, you know, white supremacy is having such an effect on black men raising their children. And we're not really even identifying the fact that it is having this effect. We don't we don't we don't think about, oh, it's white supremacy that's keeping us from our kids. We just think about it's it's a chick doing this and a chick trying to act bad. No, it's because you got a chick that's following white supremacy. That's so that's that's why you're having such a hard time raising your child. But go ahead, yeah, yeah. since you didn't came back up. Um, I <clears throat> yeah, I, I came back up, but I, I was unsure whether or not the panel was still going to be open because it was like getting close to, uh, well, close we far past the time, but I said I'm gonna let this go to four hours. I noticed that while back, but I said I'm gonna let it go to four hours. So, oh, nice, nice. Yeah, what I want to say is I wanted to address uh, what King Olowo said about uh, black men not having standards. 
Um, part of white supremacy is making sure that black men um, don't make money, they don't get educated because it makes them too competitive as mates to other women, as well as it makes them patriarchs within their own community. So uh, black men are actually, it's the issue isn't necessarily black men having low standards. It's just many, many black, well, obviously that, that is an issue, but the, the, the real issue is um, black men not being given the tools to actually enforce the standard. Many of these, uh, uh, many of the black men that you see that have the lowest standards tend to be black men who are either compromised financially, they're compromised mm -hmm. legally, or they're compromised socially by just being unable to speak well or not being um, like uh, able to to compete with uh, with the women or anyone else in the environment. Hey, you 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 know what? I think it co. I think it also goes back to just simply how you were raised. You know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of home did you come from? Um, did you have both parents at, at home? And if you did, how impactful were they individually in, in your life? You know, um, of course, you know, I had an incredible mother. She died young. She was 41. She was 41 when she passed away. I was 14. My, my dad taught me the value of a dollar. I mean, he worked the shit out of me every every summer doing hardcore landscaping, me and my brother, in the blazing hot Georgia summer sun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think it just kind of goes back to how you're built. Like Pops, he had his ways. He wasn't the best Papa, uh, unfortunately, but he um he taught me that to to be a man, it takes a hell of a lot more than you realize, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, and it's just it's like okay, like once you get that built up in you, and you know who you are, you know where you came from, you know how much sacrificing it took to get to where you at. It, I mean, it's just I don't know. It's like I I won't accept but a certain level of respect from anybody, not just a woman. So, I mean, it just how, you know, like did your parents instill that confidence in you when you were a baby? You know what I'm saying? Um, those early childhood years are very important. You know, like my folks always taught me, hey, look, like be the best Timothy you can be. Of course, that's my government name, Timothy. Be the best Timothy you can be. If you don't, I got a belt and a switch waiting on you when you get home. <laughs> That's all there is to it. You know, you know, you know I, I, um, you know, I applaud what Kevin Sanders is doing, but I'm going to say this: I don't believe that these women on that call into the show are sincere. I don't think they're going to change. I think they're they're just giving lip service. But at the end of the day, there's no incentive for them to change because the power structure supports their dysfunctionalism. You know what I mean? And they're not going to raise their kids to respect black men. And they're not really going to change for a black male uh, high value uh, person. It's not, I, I just don't believe in that. I think they're, they're just being disingenuous. Well, uh, I mean, the thing is, do we accept that women are liars or not? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I keep saying that black women are liars. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, what what do you expect them to do when you have a conversation with them? That's, a lie should be expected just about at this point. You know what I'm saying? You have to know a woman very well to to listen to her and think she's not lying. You know, and, and and maybe that's my perception because I've worked with the public so much that I've seen them lie time and time again. And and uh, I mean, the information I've I've had ac access to, even when I had um the uh, the young lady celebrity come to my show. And she talked about um, women being told to lie or taught how to lie, and even the, um, the 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 people who are working in the and I forget exactly what what her job was, but she was working in that system where the uh, like the DCFS and things like that, where they're supposed to protect the children, and they was coming up with all these lies because it was fathers that was like really good fathers, but they didn't want the, the children to be to get in the father's custody. So they would even tell the women what lie they supposed to tell for for the court system and everything. Like lying is what they do. 
you know, I, I think we just need to accept it as black men. That's what they do. They lie. That's how they manipulate society to get what they want. Because again, they ain't, they fought no wars to get anything. They won no battles to get anything. Everything they get has been a gift from men. So they lie to get them. That was cold, Roger. You got to put that on a new mixtape that you're making. <laughs> cold with fat. I mean, I learned so much listening to this cat. It's it's. I'm impressed. You know, I'm 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 smart because I listen to niggas like Roger talk. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the only reason. <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying that. You know. The yeah, what's his name? Um, the 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 black manosphere situation itself, uh, King. It has been incredibly refreshing for us as men. Well, for black. Oh men. man. Yeah, it's been incredibly Cause it's refreshing because like, sometimes you feel like you out here by yourself. You really do. <laughs> like you feel like you're in the battle by yourself. But then when you see your brothers really get up here, and you know, like the way Roger be talking, you can tell. But you know, we we, we still we got a lot of work ahead. It's a lot of work ahead. It's a lot of work. I mean, um, like you said, I, I'm just glad forums like this exist because um, because it's like a thinking black man or a black man with any high level of common sense. There's no outlet or platform where you're being praised or catered to anywhere. It's like we literally had to create it ourselves and cultivate it ourselves. Um, so yeah, so just going back to everything Roger's been talking about, um, yeah, uh, niggas are hated just that much. And uh, <laughs> I mean, so it's like, we gotta lift each other up and prop each other up, you know? Um, but yeah, but yeah, but as they say, it's lonely at the top. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta so much, so much so to the point where like you got to divest and date out you know you know of course i went and got a black woman from another part of the world but still i mean just to find somebody that'll appreciate you just to have family members that'll that'll appreciate you i mean like i got female first cousins on my mother's side that won't even talk to me and I ain't did nothing to him. No, you no, you did you nothing. did something, King. King, you did something. You 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 chose yourself. You chose happiness. That's what you did. Yeah, you, you chose happiness. That's that that's what you did to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, yeah. and let me say this too, because I don't want somebody to misinterpret something that's being said. Uh again, I pushed that black men try to figure out some way to start making at least six figures. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff in society we need to, we need to change, and we're gonna have to pay somebody to represent us to make those changes. So you're gonna have to have disposable income. You you gotta have it at the end of the day. Um, I agree with that 100. percent Yeah, other people are not gonna try to come and do a whole lot of things to fight and fight for our situation to get better. We're gonna have to have the money it's gonna take to put the money out there to make the situation better. So I'm not against men. Uh, making money because people would interpret it. Oh, well, you you just against me and making. No, nah, I, I think we should make money, you know. But I think you do have to take make a personal choice that when you're gonna cut black women off once you get to a certain figure. Because if you make X amount of dollars and you've been dealing with black women your whole life, you know what I'm saying. At some point in time, there needs to be some type of cutoff. Women should should know that if we get to a certain level of success, that we just don't deal with them anymore. Because if you can't value us before we hit that point, there's no reason for us to value you after we hit that point. But unless men make this type of stuff plain, women will keep up with their BS at the end of the day. That's what they're going to do. Uh, but I'm going to get a flow real quick to KP from KC5, and then we can kind of go into some closing statements because we're going to have to get up out of here. I can give y'all an extra hour today. Perfect time. Just to let y'all know, I appreciate y'all. I do appreciate all y'all. Go ahead, KP. How you doing, Good. brother? We appreciate you, Roger. Hey, thanks for another great show. But I was going to say this. It looks like the end goal to me is from what I see. And I kept dropping in the chat early before some people was on. Dr. Brittany Cooper was saying recently that we don't need traditional families in the black community. 
so what I see happening as the men divest is what the white supremacists want to happen for them. The women will run into the arms of the other women. That seems to be the thing. They are raising the boys to be effeminate. So the boys are no longer wanting to be men because of the women. And the women are going to run into the arms of the other women that are in the community, so to speak. So that's just exactly what I see happening. That's why they exude so much masculinity on a higher level, so to speak, as we see all the time, over and over. They do exactly the opposite of what the men ask them to do in the community. They do the blue hair. They do the pink hair. They do the long claw nails. They do the long lashes. They do everything you tell them not to do and then ask you to accept it the way that is. Good point. Good point. And, and, I, and, they, get, and they get bigger, right? Excellent and they get point. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say that the girls that I deal with, I've, I've literally told them that because I seen one of them, one of them went out to <coughs> the school dance or something like that. And she got, she went and got a, uh, Maybe it was a wig or something, but uh, but it wasn't her regular hair. It was like a blonde or something like that. It was colored hair at the end of the day. So of course I immediately, uh, once I saw the picture, I you know what I'm saying because they you know took a picture and sent it to me. Once I saw that, the next talk was about how hoes wear colored hair. You know what I'm saying? You need to separate yourself from hoes. If you're gonna wear colored hair, you're telling people you a hoe at the end of the day. I don't care what people want to say about how you want to switch it up and change up this and this and that and that. What woman walking around with a with a hair hair full of colored hair wasn't a hoe? I'm not saying one don't exist, but I definitely don't meet them. That's that's like an automatic sign that she's a hoe, just about. You know, it's almost Roger. It's almost like we watch a real life bats. Yeah. yeah. So 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 guys who who are able to influence their daughters, you better start teaching your daughters how to make sure she separate herself from the hoes. Because they are the holes are definitely trying to create a situation where everybody's dressed the same, so you can't tell the holes from the ones who not. That's that's what they want. That's part of what their goal is. But we are at the four hour mark, y'all. So um, I believe Q is the 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 elder on the panel right now. So uh, Q, I'm gonna let you start with closing thought. We're gonna go clockwise. So that'd be uh, King Olowo after you, then Casual Observer, then J Bones, then KP. So go, you got it, Q. How you doing, brother? Well, I know how you're doing, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> I just want to say this, brother, is that the damage has been done. Um, there's no repair to this damage. Um, we, we've seen how they've raised our, our kids to be emasculated, to be compliant, to be submissive. And we, we cannot allow this to continue. Also, they, they have demonstrated that they're not interested in, in coming to the table to work with us collectively to fight white supremacy. So in my mind, there's nothing more to be said or done, um, no negotiation. We as men need to collectively move on and find spaces where we can come together um, like this platform and discuss issues that pertain to us and how we're going to move forward into the future. The whole idea that whatever circumstances, whether it be the, the, you know, the, the pandemic or whatever is going to force them to comply or be submissive, or they're gonna take classes to be uh, feminine. It's it's not gonna work. It's just putting a bandaid on the situation. The 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 mere when you look at things like the the abortion rate, the physical uh, violence that they perpetrate against men, um, you you have to just come to the conclusion like we have throughout the years been very very um, um, easygoing, compliant, and other races of, of people have seen this. Especially white women know. That we're very liberal, we're, we're very easygoing, um, but we continually get stepped on um, by our own women and 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 globally embarrassed by them. The world sees their their obesity rate. The world sees their attitude. The world sees the multicolored hair and the weeds and the blonde hair and all of that, and it, it reflects on us poorly. And I and I do agree with Roger in saying that. They are not our women. The women that we choose to marry, that's our women. So all I, I just want to just leave with this idea that we need to move on. And um, whatever happens to them under white supremacy is their fault. And it's a case of the chickens coming home to roost. Thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, King, you got it. 
Yes, sir. I'm here, man. Um, just uh, just glad that you had me on, Roger. You know what I'm saying? I'm, my level of knowledge, my level of intelligence has come from listening to guys like you, bro. Like, definitely. Um, to the fellas, of course, um, we talked about a multitude of different topics uh, during this panel. As most of the panels, <clears throat> as most of the panels on Rogers show go, because they're so damn good. Um, so, but anyway, it's just um, black men. We just need to step one: love yourself, because that's kind of where it all starts. It starts with you at the end of the day. So it's like self-love, self-esteem is very important. Um, if you didn't get it at home, you got to find a way to get it out the mud. It is what it is, man. I mean, like, at the end of the day, you are responsible for your happiness. No one else is. You're responsible for your happiness. So, you know, like like I shared earlier in the panel, you know, I, of course, we still cool, but we definitely don't talk as much as we used to. Definitely. Uh, you know, we had to let my homeboy know he was fucking up, man. Like, bro, like, you attached yourself permanently to the wrong type of woman, bro. You finna, you about to live a life of misery for nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it really broke my heart to see that doing, you know, to see him do that to himself. So, you know, I'm tired of getting my heart broken, goddamn it. Stop. Fucking with these stupid ass bitches. Stop it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh yeah, man, just love yourself, man. You know. Um, educate yourself, listen to guys like the Roger Report. And I mean, just educate yourself, love uh love yourself, and um just remember you are responsible for your happiness. You and you alone. I'll shake. All right. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate uh, you, man. Later. And, and for the ladies who listen to this, just keep in mind that uh, y'all don't have to be these women. Y'all can choose to be different if you want to, but that's on you at the end of the day. And it's not our job to make you better. It's your job to make yourself better. Go ahead, Casual. <clears throat> hey there. Um, I'm going to use my uh, closing statement to uh, thank Roger for uh, putting together such a, a good show. Um, over the course of the year, like many of us have listened to uh, the Roger Report while we were working or on days we were just chilling or when we were traveling. So, yeah, the Roger Report's really made my uh, my, my life better during uh, during the, the pandemic. And also, I wanted to tell uh, um, the folks listening to, uh, to the show, maybe as the year winds down to an end, uh, reflect on some of the things you've heard over the course of the year and really think about how you, you're going to, um, to use what you've learned uh, or what you've heard on this show um, to uh, better your own life. It's one thing to listen to a lot of these uh, streams over like uh, the like uh, during the day, like during uh, the lockdown, but it's another thing to reflect and really think about how some of the things you've heard on these panels uh, could be uh, used to better your own life. Uh, that's it. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Definitely. You know, and I do want people to do that. Shout out to care of a black man being brutally honest. He's been in the chat all day today just about so y'all if y'all ain't subscribed to kev make sure y'all subscribe to him his channel was black men being brutally honest okay um jay bones you got the flow my brother yeah um as always roger thank you so much for having me up um thanks you thanks uh, everybody shout out to all the usual suspects uh good to see my brother casual Q, King, She, um, our sisters Kim and uh, Toya. Um, yeah, as Casual Observer said, um, it, it is true. It, it hit really hard because I think, especially during the pandemic, is most of the time a lot of us were able to catch because I was completely new to the Roger Report, and it's it's changed a lot of us. You know, like Roger always says, we got to take what we hear, we hear on the panel or what we hear on the show, and you know. Pretty much um 
instill it into our real lives. You know, it's, it's, it's a day-to-day -day struggle, especially as black men. And it's, um, it's not getting any better. And technically, it won't get better. I've always said it, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I can see it, you know, with a lot of African-American brothers, a lot of our Eidos brothers getting better and achieving it at the highest that they've ever achieved, things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. You know, the, the better black men get, the more achievements, the more hierarchy, the more accomplishments, the more things are going to get a whole lot worse. It's going to be coming from all sides. It's not just the, uh, the so-called sisters. White supremacy is as active as ever. So, you know, you boys keep your head on a swivel and um, we'll get through it. You know, we're not, we're not, it's, it's not a coincidence that we're descendants of God himself. So we'll get through it. Not a big deal. You know, you boys keep strong. And uh, as Roger, thank you so much, man. Shout out to Rael, shout out to Black Bull and um, the usual suspects. And um, as always, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm the greatest person on the Raj Roger Report. I love, I love me very much. And I'm just the most wonderful person ever. Well, me, Jaquan, Toya, and Jadeo, we're, we're the best people in the Roger Report. I just wanted to add. You must mean the best guest. It, you must mean. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm happy you feel that way about yourself. I do. I th think it's important for you to think that about yourself. You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I can definitely appreciate the sentiment. I really do. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. Well, I just want to say that white supremacy is a thing. Okay. You got to learn to recognize it in different areas of life. And I'm going to give a special shout out to Sugar Bomb because she's still here. Okay, now I can't tell y'all she listened the whole time if she left and came back, whatever the case is. But I'm gonna give her some credit for being here this long at the end of the day. Cause Sugar Bomb, if you if you keep coming over here, I promise you, you 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 gonna you gonna get the real. That's what you're gonna get at the end of the day. So I'm gonna give you some credit for even still being here. Okay. And yes, even you got some white supremacy to shake off. Cause yes, it was taught to you as a kid. And I understand why it, it still shows up. You know what I'm saying? I get why any woman would keep it, and even to the day that they, they, they die. I do get it, but I'm not going to act like it's not there. You know what I'm saying? That's not to make you feel comfortable or less comfortable. The truth is the truth at the end of the day. And when we recognize the truth, we can make better decisions. So as a black woman, I am always have love for you because you're one of mine as far as my people is concerned. But, uh, you know, I appreciate you for at least sitting through. You know, and and yes, you can agree to disagree if you want to. You know, it, you you got you got a right to uh, accept or reject the information as you see fit. But you at least stay through. And if you keep coming back around, you're gonna learn some stuff at the end of the day, and it'll start to make sense to you. I promise you that it's all gonna start to make sense to you. You know, cause cause I paint pictures over here. All right, it just take takes a uh, takes a while for certain pictures to be painted, but everything correlates. Everything goes together. It works out to our benefit if we use the best tactics. So um, now I do want y'all to, to, at this point though, y'all have to actually start calling out black women who choose to be single mothers as a potential white supremacist. She's at least that. Now, once you talk to her and you know her story, you can confirm whether she's a white supremacist or not. And and one way to confirm this is to know is the reason she's a single mother has something to do with her uh, other than being a widow. Is she a widow? Because we, we don't, we don't want to jump on the widows. They try to do the right thing. Or is she a single mother because she's simply rebellious to a man? You know, now, again, they're going to have their stories about how the man is bad and he didn't do this and I didn't know he was going to be this way. Well, you can't give a pass for that because that's, that's her being reckless and she just got caught. That's, that's what having a baby is. You got reckless and you got caught. It, it's simple as that. There's no excuse for it at the end of the day. Hold them all accountable the same way society holds us accountable as black men. And then they're going to have to get better at that point because that's why we're getting better. OK. And some people may not like that, but there is truth in that. The reason black men are improving so much is because we're we're held accountable more than anybody else at the end of the day. You know, even like I again with that story yesterday with uh, Lauren uh, Field Smith, I think. It, no, it was it was Smith Fields. I, I think uh, her name was. Um, white man report report that the woman is dead now, or the woman's unresponsive 
They said he a nice man, didn't even investigate. That wouldn't have happened to no black man to call that in. You know, don't know if he did it or not. My suspicion is that he did it. But I'm just saying in general, ain't no black man finna call that in and actually be there when the cops show up and not get investigated. Whether he was attached to the situation or not, they gonna ask that man some questions. That's the way it goes. So we are held more accountable than anybody else. Plus, I do believe we're better morally than other people. That's just who we are as a people. That's not a bad thing. It's okay to be a good person. It's okay to have a nice image. But you do have to be ruthless at the proper times. Okay? But don't worry about saving people who do not want to be saved. It's, it's just a waste of your time at the end of the day. And I'm going to leave it right there. I will see y'all tomorrow morning. For those who are new, this is Monday through Fridays, 9 a.m. Uh, the, the, the for those who want to participate in uh, the basketball uh, discussion on the Black Dimension, um, I'm gonna do the next one Sunday. I decided to do the next one Sunday, and I'll probably do that weekly. We are ranking the 75 top players in the NBA. We've already ranked the first 10 on the list. We're gonna do the second 10 next, so that'll be on Sunday, 11 a.m. probably. Okay, I, I may change the time due to the breakdown a woman's perspective, but. Uh, Because if y'all don't know, Sister George is a habitual line stepper. So I may change the time because of that, because they like to go on early some days. I might have to check in and see see what's going on over there. But uh, the the next one will probably be done on Sunday. So I'll see y'all next time around. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. Love all y'all. Thank you for the financial support from those who are doing so. And, uh, you know, special shout out again for for the uh, sponsor of today's show. Gold Professor. Appreciate you, Gold Professor. And Gold Professor has a great channel. Y'all should go check him out as well. Check out Gold Professor's channel. He does a lot of good work over there. So that's it for me. Long live the habitual line steppers. I'm Roger. I'm right. And I'm out.